focus, students can now eat healthy and fresh for free. Also, how students manage religion while keeping up with their busy lives. Plus, President Castro talks about the new campus shuttle. Fresno State Focus starts now. Hello and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Joseph Castellan. And I'm Nicole Orsieri. The Mexican Consulate presented Fresno State with the Mexican flag this morning. It was part of a special Flag Day ceremony at the Henry Madden Library. Flag Day, or Dia de la Bandera, is a national holiday in Mexico honoring the meaning behind the design of the Mexican flag. Student Carlos Lopez was born in Mexico and he says he feels a lot of pride that the consulate is giving Fresno State the flag. I'm just really looking forward to hearing what they're going to talk about. And, you know, it's just really nice to know that there's a little piece of home in my own school. Vice President Frank Lamas accepted the flag for the President Castro, who couldn't make it to the ceremony today because he was sick. About 50 students attended the flag ceremony. One of the biggest frustrations that Fresno State students have to deal with is trying to find parking on campus. Reporter Johnny Martin takes a closer look on what's being done to help. There are 4,000 more students at Fresno State, but there's still the same amount of parking. The current parking situation has Fresno State student Ruby Sultan frustrated. No, I've bought in the past, the past four years, but this year it's not worth it just because you can't even find parking if you have class in five minutes or even if you come an hour early you'll never you know find a spot so it's not worth it there's been talk of a possible parking structure but that would cost upwards of 40 million dollars to build students have been complaining by twitter email and other social media platforms and asi president abigail hudson heard what they were saying a very serious talk with the administration about what are we going to be able to do to provide better parking for students? And no one really had a perfect solution. We had a lot of ideas on the table about how we could fix this. With parking still a big concern among students, President Castro decided to install a campus shuttle to help with the lack of parking. The shuttle currently has five stops running down Barstow from Campus Point to the football stadium and even to Sorority Row, and a potential sixth stop is currently in the works. It will have other benefits like if a student wants to go from the main part of campus to campus point for lunch or dinner uh, it'll it'll make it easier to do those kinds of things as well. After the first few weeks in service the average daily ride total is just over 300 riders. That may be a low number comparatively speaking to the attendance total but that is 300 fewer students fighting for a parking spot. Johnny Martin, Fresno State Focus. Students have different ways to deal with the stress school can bring. And for many students, religion plays an important role. Kinesiology major Raquel Romo is celebrating one of the most important Catholic holy days at Fresno State Satellite Student Union. Oh God, who are moved by accident. This is Romo's first year at Fresno State. She says taking her time to practice her religion gives her comfort and helps her stay focused. I mainly just set aside Sundays for religion-wise, and I try to get all my homework done before that time. Sundays and Thursdays are when I have just set for religion to do worship and just praise. Amen, I say to you. Bill Lucido, it's the deacon of the St. Paul Newman Center that hosts the Ash Wednesday service on campus. He says religion helps students cope with the stress of school. Yes, people have to be uh, grounded in something. And this is something, religion, that you can be grounded in. Many students wish they had more time to practice religion, but in most cases, the only option is coming to the library and checking out a Bible. Another way is getting involved in campus and community organizations, which is what senior Liliana Toast does. And I'm involved with the Richter Center, which is like the community service center on campus, and I'm involved in this, and I'm a Smith camp student. 
Fresno State has 15 faith-based clubs and organizations such as the Catholic Student Association, CRU, and the bilingual organization Estudios. Membership in these organizations helps students connect with others with shared interest, and it helps them find the time to practice their faith. But, I mean, if you're not doing it for God, like, what's the point is kind of my... If you would like to find out about the different religious organizations and clubs on campus, visit fresnostate.edu. Nothing like a little puppy love to make everything right. For you? Oh, okay. oh, that's, oh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Good. Oh, okay. That okay. I'll hide him in the grab room with me. <laughs> I, can, I can flex my hours. I'll just work Pause for a Cause brought a couple dozen puppies to campus today. The idea was to bring awareness to the Central California SPCA. Students and staff were happy to stop by and learn more. Organizers say that the event is more than just an opportunity to play with puppies. The SPCA hopes to educate students and staff about the shelter in a fun way. Fresno State Student Involvement Organization is helping students balance busy college life with a healthy lifestyle. Fresno State Focus reporter Brandon Gutierrez has an inside look at how you can get hands on some fresh and healthy food. Balancing their heavy dose of work with a healthy way of living. For many Fresno State students, the struggle is real. According to Fresno State dietitian Stephanie Annette, less than 2% of Fresno State students get their recommended daily helping of fruits and vegetables. In fall of 2015, the program started receiving donations of fresh fruit, partnering up with the Bulldog Food Pantry and Fresno State Student Cupboard in order to raise awareness for students about where they can pick up free fruits and veggies. At first, many Fresno State students could not believe what they were seeing. Annette says there has been nothing but positive feedback from students who take part in this event, and it sounds like that trend will continue for a little longer. We just do, it's called Take a Fresh Food Break. Bananas and oranges. And apples. That's awesome. I'm a big fan of the Food is Free project. Yes. Food and go ahead and grab one? Annette and her staff are available in the Student Health and Counseling Center anytime to help with any health and nutrition needs. She says a healthy life does take some time and effort, but it is well worth it. Tiny adjustments with enormous results. Brandon Gutierrez, Fresno State Focus. Now let's go to Fabiola Ramirez for entertainment news. Fresno has had much success with its local artists. One specific artist is a good example of the new age of music. Local up and coming R&B artist Brian Cade is only 23 years old, but he's already making wave in local music scenes. Cade was born in Tulare in 1992. In high school, he tried out for the next Big Thing talent show. He won the competition and the opportunity to open up for a major artist at the Big Fresno Fair. Here's a sneak peek of his music. Here with us today hey. is Brian Cade himself. Yes, yes, Hello. Hello. Nice Hello. to meet you. Pleasure. Thank you so much for yes, joining us today. Yes, ma'am. Thank you guys today. for having me and inviting me. I appreciate the love. Yes, ma'am. So tell me about that new release you have. Um, the new project is called Who is Brian Cade? Uh, I've been on um, a crazy promo run. I was in Las Vegas last week. I went to Los Angeles last week. I was on KC24 yesterday. So wow. I've just dropped five songs. Um, and then, honestly, I just appreciate all the love that Fresno's been showing me. Um, just being able to come out here and get an opportunity like this to come to Fresno State's campus and uh, just talk about my project, you know, and get the chance to talk to my peers. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, so you just mentioned Fresno. Yes, How is the Fresno community kind of pumping you up for everything? Uh, you know, honestly, I feel like in this um, this facet that I'm in, as far as entertainment, and it's just entertainment in all areas, uh, music and art and all that stuff, Fresno, if you are able to succeed here, I feel like you're able to succeed anywhere. And I feel like, um, you know, these last five years that I've been making music and being from Fresno and in Fresno is just built me up to be the beast that I am now to a degree. So, awesome. Yeah, so tell me, do you write the music? Yeah. Tell uh, me what you do. 
what, what I do is I sing, it's called in my body. So I sing, oh. I rap a little bit, I dance a little bit. The songs that are on the project, there's five of them. Um, I wrote the majority of them. My man, Nathaniel Livingston, which is also my manager, also mm -hmm. a songwriter that I use in my circle, helped me write a couple records as well, but I'm, I'm like Usher. You write the records for me and I deliver, you know what I'm saying? So, yes ma'am. Awesome. Yes, ma so I'm gonna have to ask for all the ladies. Mm, yeah. So are you single or yeah, what's up? Yeah, of course I'm single. <laughs> Where's the camera at? Yes, I'm single, all of you. <laughs> well, that's great. I'm sure all of yes, your fans would like to know. Yeah. So we wanna know what's next for Brian Cade. What's coming up? Um, Immediately, um, I'm pushing the project. I'm actually going to, out to Texas. Uh, the South by Southwest uh, Music Festival is coming up. So uh, I went out last year with my man Z Will. He had a crazy run out there. Um, so now it's my turn to go out there this year. So I'm doing my thing out there. That's my next thing. Okay, I'm excited. Awesome. I'm excited. Is there anything that you want to tell your fans, you know, that they're um, watching you? Or those people who may not be your fans just yeah. yet? Um, I want everybody to know that Brian Cade is an individual. Uh, I'm a human being just like you are. Um, I have aspirations and dreams just like everybody else out there. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know me, for those who do know me, I appreciate the love. Uh, I appreciate the support. Um, if you're looking for the project, uh, The Brian Cade on SoundCloud, it's as simple as it sounds, The Brian Cade. Uh, just search it and you'll find it. Okay. And yeah, it's the project. Awesome. And tell us about your social media. Where do they look you up? Twitter, uh, Brian Cade One. YouTube, Brian Cade One. Instagram, Brian Cade One. SoundCloud, Brian Cade One. Uh, wow. Uh, well, we can find you. Put it in your phone. Brian Cade One. That's what they're looking awesome. for. Awesome. Anything else you want to tell your fans? Because um, they're excited to I want to say you. thank you, Fresno State Focus. For those who are watching this, you don't know how difficult it was to get here, but I'm so happy I got the chance to get here and make it happen. So thank awesome. you Awesome. Thank you for, so much for yes, being here. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank you. Yes. All right, well, thank you so much for him for joining us. Coming up on Fresno State Focus, how the upcoming CSU strike could affect students. And later on, how one university high school student raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to build a playground for kids whose mothers are transitioning out of prison. Success. At Fresno State, it's no secret. It's discovering new ways to change our world. It's creating opportunities as diverse as our community itself. It's in the distinction of our graduates as they lead us into the future. Success is no secret at Fresno State. It's our mission. For Fresno State, forming relationships and learning experiences that last a lifetime. Making friends who are like family, learning from professors who treat us like family and earning a degree to make a better future for our family. Engaging our alumni generation by generation by generation. This is our Fresno State. Welcome to the family. Welcome back and to Fresno State, this is Miriam Perez, and I'm gonna bring you your weather. Wasn't it a nice day today? It was, it was very warm, but let's see what, how our, our friends in the East Coast are doing. As you can see, there's a lot of activity going on. There's light snow going on, affecting Michigan, Illinois, most of all, but there's a lot of rain, as you can see, uh, starting from New Jersey all the way to the south to Florida. A lot of rain for them, we feel kind of bad because we don't have that much going on in California, but that's not bad. If we take it to our side on the West Coast, it seems like we don't have a lot going on, but it's actually we had a storm coming in the Pacific Ocean, but it's gonna, it didn't really affect us, but it's gonna affect us later on the days. So we hope that it can bring us some rain. Um, not so too much right now, but it's fine. As I, can, as I told you, we have a storm in the Pacific Ocean. It didn't really hit us, but that's totally fine. As it will come and move maybe a little bit to our to California and maybe bring us some rain. We hope, but we are not sure. As you can see, it started in the Gulf of Alaska. It started right there, and it was coming down, but there's a ridge of high pressure that, that enabled it to hit us too hard. For our air quality in the San Joaquin, it's good. Mother in Stanislav Merced, it's good as well. Mother, most of all, in all the other counties. And Sequoia is very good. So if you guys want to do something fun, you guys can head over there. Our temperature today is 74, five miles per hour from north northwest. And our rel relative humidity is 39%. Not too bad at all. Like I said, today we have 74. It's partially cloudy, but like I said, it's very sunny today. Not bad at all. Tomorrow, sunny, 70 
and 6, a great day to go out. Don't forget to put the sound block on. Friday, partially cloudy, just like today, not too bad. 78 for Friday. Saturday, sunny. If you want to go out, that's the day you can do it, 71. Sunday, partially cloudy, but 71, not bad at all. And for our weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, we have partially cloudy, 69. Tuesday, sunny again, 73 degrees. That's it for me with weather. Let's get back to Joseph and Nicole. With talks of strike on the table, many students are left wondering how exactly that will affect them. But I will. That is the slogan for the faculty at all 23 CSU campuses. Faculty are fighting to receive a 5% pay increase. Some faculty members say that the increase is long overdue. One faculty member is willing to reveal that your income doesn't always increase with higher education. Oh, I make less than 50000 a year, and I've been here for 12 years. So I shock them. I think they think a college professor should make a lot more money than that. And in some cases they do, but as lecturers, we, we don't. The possibility of a strike will come down to the negotiations that happen in late March. However, if the strike occurs, it will happen because the CSU faculty feel this is the only way to get the point across. And faculty were willing to sacrifice, you know, during the recession and when the CSU was experiencing significant cuts from the state. But now that the CSU is being fully funded, we do think it's time to start reinvesting in the classroom, and that means reinvesting in faculty. We were able to speak to President Castro during his open forum. Concerns of the CSU faculty strike were the main topic of discussion. So I want to also ensure that we have the staff that we expect to be here and the campus will continue to function. Yes. President Castro is very optimistic that if the strike does occur, that students will remain the number one priority. The strike is scheduled for April 13th through the 15th and April 18th and 19th. Now that the dates of the strike are officially set, it is easy for students to be overwhelmed with misinformation. Joining us today in the studio is English Department Chair, Dr. Lisa Weston. Thank you very much for being with us. Okay. So we have been talking uh, about the faculty strike and mm -hmm. what would you say to students who wanna know more about the strike? Well, inform yourselves about it. Uh, there are a number of places you can go for that. Um, on campus is a student group, Students for Equality Education. They have uh, meetings weekly. Go and attend, ask questions. Questions will be answered. You can also go to the uh, union website, calfac.org, and that has frequently asked questions and full information and also a lot of background on how we got to this point and the issues. And um, are all faculty members looking to strike? Is it just full-time faculty or even just part-time? Or who's actually going to be striking? All faculty are in the bar who are in the bargaining unit, which is both your professors, your associate professors, your assistant professors, lecturers, um, all, all faculty, all classroom faculty, plus uh, librarians, um, coaches, and counselors. Wow, that's a are lot. all in the bargain. <laughs> that's a lot of people on this that's campus. That's a lot then. of people. Yeah. Uh, so what would you say to students who are concerned about losing instruction time during the strike? That's a valid, uh, that's a valid worry. And frankly, a strike works because we withhold our labor as faculty, which means you find out what education without your faculty is like. Um, and that's obviously a lesson that administration needs to learn. Yeah, yeah, it would be a big lesson. <laughs> so I noticed, uh, you probably can't see it at home, but you're wearing the faculty button, and it seems like these signs have been popping up all over about the fight for five. Mm -hmm. um, so are we going to see more and more um, posters and flyers going around as we get closer to the date of the strike? Oh, yes, you will. You might want to look out into parking lots and see cars with the I don't want to strike, but I will um, sunshades on them. Uh, first week or so of, of uh, class, you may have noticed a number of your faculty wearing red. That was a sign that they are already beginning to think and plan for strike. Uh, but yes, there will be more information going out to the community at large, including the students. And students should always ask that asking questions is part of education. And we are first and foremost educators. So ask questions and questions will be answered. All right, well, awesome. So that we were just been uh, talking with Dr. Lisa Weston. So thank you very much for stopping by today. Coming up in sports, we have a live interview with Fresno State's athletic director of media, Stephen Tremblay. 
Plus, Steve, the Fresno State men's basketball team can go for a fifth straight home victory. Stay tuned for sports with Justin Ballinger. I got the ball down to me. Up in my head. Up in my head. Up in my head. I got that bull dog spirit. Up in my head. Up in my head to say. I got that bull dog spirit. Deep in my heart. Deep in my heart. Deep in my heart. I got that bull dog spirit. Deep in my heart. Deep in my heart to stay. I got that bull dog spirit. Down in my toes. Down in my toes. Down in my toes. Deep in my heart. Deep in my heart. Deep in my heart. That, that bulldogs. With back-to-back -back victories, the Fresno State men's basketball team is getting hot at the right time. Saturday evening, the dogs hosted Utah State. With a five-point lead and about five minutes remaining, the momentum continued going the dogs' way when senior guard Cesar Guerrero knocked down a huge three-pointer to push the lead to eight. The Aggies went on a run of their own, cutting the lead to two with under two minutes remaining. Colin Russo, who's picked up his play as of recently, hit back-to-back -back baskets to push the lead back up to six. Russo finished with 17 points for the second time in just as many games. Preseason Mountain West Player of the Year, Marvell Harris sunk clutch free throws down the stretch to put the Aggies away. Harris finished the high point man with 22 points and five assists while going an impressive 10 for 10 from the free throw line. Ultimately, the Bulldogs ended the night with a 75-68 victory, improving their overall record to 18-9 and their conference record to 9-5. Catch the Bulldogs in action tonight at 7 in the Save Mart Center. With their highest national ranking since 2010, the Bulldogs continue to impress. It was a huge weekend for Fresno State's softball team as they hosted their Fresno State kickoff tournament. Saturday, the Jayhawks took on a tough Bulldog team that they just can't seem to edge past. It would be even harder to try and stop the dogs as senior ace Joe Compton was on the mound. In the bottom of the third, Bulldogs struck first with a single right up the middle by Malia Rivers, scoring, bring, scoring Bria Kennedy from second. But Kansas responded in the sixth with a sack fly, evening the, the game up at one. Kansas took a 2-1 lead off a single that edged right past the pitcher in the top of the eighth. But with the bases loaded, Paige Gums hit a huge sing single tying the game for the Bulldogs. And with a 3-2 count in the bottom of the eighth, Morgan Howe was walked, giving the Fresno State Bulldogs the victory and extending their record to 8-0. With men's basketball having one of their best seasons in years and softball being nationally ranked, these sports, the sports teams have been a big topic on campus. Joining us here today is the man who knows the Bulldogs more than anyone, Director of New Media, Stephen Trimbley. Thank you for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the progress of the basketball team throughout the season? Well, we've seen over the last four years the Fresno State men's basketball team continuing to pr improve in conference play. And right now, alone in second place after New Mexico's loss last night up in Fort Collins, the Bulldogs having a chance to continue to build that momentum to, the, to Las Vegas where they'll compete in the 2016 Mountain West Basketball Championships the second week of March. Well, how do you feel or what do you feel their ceiling is uh, come tournament time? I mean, there's really no ceiling for this team. When, this, when, when Fresno State, our Bulldogs, play defense that they know, that they, know, know uh, that they can play, as well as shoot the ball and make shots like we saw them make up at Wyoming going 15 for 22, I mean, nearly 70% from beyond the three-point arc. When they're that deadly from three-point range and when they're turning it up on defense and use, really going out in transition, scoring both on offense and defense, that's when we know that they, they can play with just about anybody. Now we've faced some adversity, having some injuries so far this season, but really being able to respond and having that depth where the roster is so full from top to bottom that they're really building and having that momentum come tournament time. And we'll, we'll see how the seeds fall, but I like our chances. Uh, going past the tournament or going past the conference tournament, do you feel as if they've made such a resume to possibly make it to the NCAA tournament? Well, Fresno State is going to have to win the Mountain West tournament to get into the NCAA tournament. So there, there's no question about that. Just of what 
when you look at all the bubble teams and whatnot, they're, they're in top 100 in the RPI, but you really need to be, need to be in that top 45 to top 50 to be in, significant, in serious conversation for an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. But, I mean, the Bull Bulldogs are focused on each game at a time and really building that, uh, that just putting themselves in the best position to win the Mountain West Tournament and make it to the NCAA Tournament. There's some other postseason tournaments that the Bulldogs can make if they don't win the Mountain West Tournament, but that's their focus right now. And with Marvell Harris being the preseason player of the year and him continuing his play throughout the season, uh, what do you feel he means to this team? Marvell is uh, uh, the heart and soul of this team. As as Marvell goes, a lot of a lot of nights, so goes the team. But there's th this team is more than just Marvell Harris. Marvell Harris fills the stat sheet from points, steals, rebounds, assists. Really does it all, and is making a case to not just be the preseason player of the year, but the postseason player of the year. And that's what the other two Bulldogs that have been preseason player of the year, Melvin Eli and Courtney Alexander, both first round lo uh, lottery picks back in the late two early 2000s they both did the same thing. They were preseason player of the year, and they backed it up and were postseason player of the year. But it's so hard in a competitive conference like the, it was in the Western Athletic Conference for both Courtney Alexander and Melvin Eli. But now with Marvell Harris competing against the likes of Josh Adams, Elijah Brown, J James Wedd, who suffered an injury. We'll see how he is later this week uh, from Boise State last night. But he's making a case, and he's playing, as be uh, he's playing as well as anybody in the conference is right now, averaging almost 26 points a game over those last five games where the Bulldogs have gone 4-1. and one and have built for these, this last two weeks of the season. Well, I want to personally thank you for coming and sh sharing your time with us. Uh, talking with us today was Stephen Trembley. Now back to Nicole for a full report on Grace's Place Playground. A university high school student has given children and their mothers a place where they can reconnect. Reporter Nichelle Antonio tells us about Grace Place Playground at the mental health system of Hacienda campus. Little Leah finally has a place where she can play while her mother learns how to make her way back into the community. It's all because a 15-year-old University High School student took a tour of this facility three years ago and didn't like what she saw. I walked around the child care center and I saw this little boy pounding his hands on the sliding glass door and he was stuck inside because he couldn't play. They Grace Bernhardt saw that the playground equipment was too big for the child and decided she wanted to do something about it. Here at the Mental Health System Siena campus, women who have been released from prison stay here until they finish with their program, and their kids stay with them also. Grace's Place Playground is a safe haven for those children. She knew that the kids who live on campus, they weren't here because they did something wrong. Their moms got into some kind of trouble or had some kind of challenge for them to end up living here. Grace wanted children at the Hacienda to have a place where they could enjoy being kids while being reunited with their moms, but that costs money. So at the age of 15, she found donors and raised $200,000. So she wanted to create a place where all kids, no matter who they were, felt comfortable and loved here and had a special place to play. Now, two years later, Grace's Place Playground has been built this is what it used to look like, and this is how it looks now. Veronica Cerati has been at the Hacienda for two months. Her two-month-old baby stays with her, but her other children are at home. But they love to visit their mom and grace this place. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing to be um, in recovery with, with, with your child. It brings a bond. So what does Grace think of what she created? Honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I, mean, I know it will be here forever and I know it's impacting these children's lives. A big deal in the lives of the children who are spending quality time with their moms. Nichelle Antonio, Fresno State Focus. Wow, what an ambitious girl to create something like that for mothers and children to have to go to and I just can't imagine trying to pull that off at 15. I was not that ambitious at 15, so <laughs> no. the thought of being able to do that is just crazy. So but good to her, good for her. Yeah, the crazy part is great. how humble she is. She mm -hmm. seems like it's just not a big deal to her, to her at all. All right, so uh, next time on Fresno State Focus, learn about the DACA program and its impact on Fresno State. Plus, find out how much help the Reading and Beyond program can help kids also, we give you an inside look at the Health Academy at Roosevelt High School.
from our team at Fresno State Focus. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.